Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabrielle Boland, Content Strategy and Communications Manager here at Whips, uh, News Whip, excuse me. And I'm joined by Benedict Nicholson, who is our editorial researcher. And today we'll be going over the 2018 Guide to Influencers. So um, just a little background before we get started. Um, we're presenting this research from NewsWhip. We are a social media analytics platform and we have a database of, of years of social data really looking at what makes content and social posts shareable across the web, what gets people, um, you know, liking them, commenting on them, sharing them, as I said, reacting to them, what really drives them and makes them viral. And so um, Ben and I head up the research center here and we're spending hours upon hours in this data really, really honing in to get you guys um, actionable insights uh, that you can apply to your marketing and communication strategies. So today we're going to be exploring influencers. Um, we're not going to be taking questions today, but you can submit those and we should be able to follow up after. You can also email us at blog at newswhip.com. You can tweet at us at newswhip and feel free to um, tweet out any of these insights today using the hashtag, hashtag newswhipdata or just tag us, that's fine too. So um, let's get started. So just to talk about what we're going to cover today, um, we're going to be looking at different influencers. To us, anyone who is an influencer is someone that has uh, an impact on a brand, um, a brand post. Um, so it could be celebrities, it could be other human influencers, it could be pet influencers, it could even be other brands or publishers. Um, so we'll be looking at the impact of those influencers, both big and small. And we'll be looking at the differences in these campaigns, platform by platform strategies, um, what some of those top brand and influencer campaigns are, and what the best practices are for, for really kickstarting your own strategies in 2018 and how you can, can uh, start this yourselves. So I'm actually going to hand over to Ben now to talk about some influencer best facts. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think the first thing you know, having defined what an influencer is uh, and what they do, which Gabrielle's very kindly just done. Um, we just want to talk about uh, a bit about, you know, why, why they're effective. Um, and the big reason for that is kind of trust and building the trust of, of audiences. Um, so a recommendation from a trusted source is actually, it's much more likely to lead to a conversion. And um, even in terms of just strangers, 92% of customers, as we can see there, trust the recommendation of, um, a, of a stranger over, over um, brands. And, you know, it, it's about having a face that people can trust rather than, you know, people often think of brands as these uh, big faceless corporations, whether that's fair or whether that's unfair, that's the reality of the situation. And to be able to have someone who they feel they know and feel they are friends with or feel, you know, represents something that they they value, to be able to have them endorse your product, whatever that might be, is a huge deal for brands and, and that's why influencers can be so effective. 75% um, of brands use influencer marketing and a lot, of, a lot of companies are actually planning to increase those budgets going into 2018. So this year, we will probably see uh, influencer marketing even grow further than it, than it has been before. Um, we've often seen a lot of celebrities involved in influencer marketing and that'll continue. Uh, uh, that's probably not gonna change and you know, they will continue to have a huge impact on, on things. But a big trend going into this year is uh, more importance on micro influencers uh, in 2018. So that might be people with, you know, a few thousand followers or so, um, but that have very engaged audiences. Um, so people who trust them and feel a, a real personal connection with them and feel that a recommendation from them is almost like a personal recommendation because that's, you know, the kind of relationship they have with this influencer. So, um, Brands like Fashion Nova have uh, enlisted the help of nearly 5,000 influencers in 2017, and obviously not all of those are huge celebrities, so micro-influencers are probably gonna grow uh, even further this year, and I'll, I'll hand you back to Gabrielle now, having, having talked you through that a little bit. 
Cool. So um, some of these influencer strategies are, are highly dependent on, on platforms. So, um, you know, you don't go to Instagram for your LinkedIn content on career trends or about what Elon Musk is up to, though, um, you know, given the Met Gala and everything last week, maybe you do now. Um, but audiences really respond well when the content matches what they enjoy consuming on the platform already. So that being said, let's take a look at Instagram and some of our findings. Um, so Instagram is actually the easiest to start looking at for influencers and we'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to hit you with some influencer fast facts. 92% um, of marketers cite uh, Instagram as being the top social network for influencer campaigns, followed by Facebook and blogs, surprisingly. And um, What's really cool about that is that nearly three-fourths of Instagram users will take an action after looking at a sponsored post, and 60% are discovering new products on the platform. So there's a huge opportunity on Instagram. Um, ad revenue is going up, and uh, we at NewsWeb have three plus years of historical Instagram data, so we're able to really analyze um, trends and holidays and all sorts of campaigns, which is pretty interesting. Um, there's not a lot of uniformity still around disclosure of campaigns. So we took a look at sponsor hashtags and there were a variety. So we looked at hashtag sponsored, hashtag paid, hashtag spawn, promo, ad, what have you. And um, for English language content, what we looked at is from March 2017 through March 2018, um, there's been a rise in total likes and comments on sponsored posts. So there's a huge opportunity on Instagram for you to um, really connect with an influencer and then reach their audience and the audience will respond well to it. So um, just to look at who the top Instagram influencers have been this year so far. So we looked at Q1 and again, we looked at sponsored hashtags and then these were the total likes and comments on sponsored posts. Unsurprisingly, you know, the top are who you expect. It's Kardashians, Jenners, models, etc. And in our breakdown, we saw that um, out of the top 50 influencers, um, two thirds were celebrities. The rest were distributed around uh, non-celebrity influencers, athletes, even publishers and one other brand. Um, across the top 50 influencers, the average amount of sponsored posts per influencer in Q1 was 10 posts. Um, one of those actually had 90 posts tagged as sponsored in Q1, so a, a lot of content is being pushed out there, and, and clearly it's paying off in engagements. And then many of her posts were actually untagged, so you know there's sponsored content out there that isn't even being disclosed, which um, you, you probably want to avoid, but just so you know that that's out there. Um, and oh yeah, Nat Geo is interesting there as well. Nat Geo is an interesting one. So yeah, even publishers are seeing a result um, when they partner with in, uh, with brands. So Nat Geo is interesting there, and they had a lot of sponsored content around partnering with um, tourism content. So that was pretty cool. When we um, switch and we look at the engagement rate here. Um, it tells a really different story. So it's no longer just the Kardashians or Jenners. Um, there's still some celebrities on there, but there's a lot more of um, of influencers themselves. You know, uh, like M Manny MUA seven three three is a prominent um, beauty influencer. So that's pretty interesting. And when we look at the engagement rate. Um, uh, Kim Kardashian's engagement rate on sponsored content was just uh, under 2.4%. Kourtney Kardashian was about 2.7%. So totally different, different stories. There's a lot of opportunities here when you go with a non-celebrity influencer. Um, and here's another example of that. So we looked in our database at um, parenting content, sponsored content for the parenting category, and we saw a definite upswing on average engagements over the past year. So influencers are getting savvier, brands are getting better at partnering with them, and people are really connecting with this content. This example here from Mommy Shorts shows a great um, example that we'll dive into more shortly, but this was a sponsored post for Pampers. And what's interesting and makes it work so well is that the influencer is really honest and candid and open. And what we'll talk about shortly is that um, social media is becoming more of a place to really bear it all. It's no longer just 
all about vanity. So brands can really form more genuine emotional connections with their audience. So this post actually drove um, 3,200 likes and more than 500 comments. And when we looked at Pampers Instagram handle, we saw that their average for Q1 was um, 396 likes and 23 comments per post in Q1. So huge, huge reach on this um, influencer post. So which brands fit well on Instagram? It's, it's really unlimited from what we saw. There's a big diversity of brands appearing in the top sponsored posts of Q1. We saw, you know, the natural fits like beauty and fashion, food, travel, fitness, but also tech, um, eyewear, healthcare, even dating apps, as we see in this example on the left here. Um, so this was actually um, from Girl With No Job, and they're using a very funny, relatable video. Um, and then the sponsored brand here, Bumble, is able to kind of convey that tone and show that they're, they have that same aesthetic and feel. Um, so what makes Instagram a fit for these brands is that you really have to understand the platform, the audience you want to reach, and how the influencer works for that. Um, so just to touch on the formats of the top influencer posts on Instagram, we took a look and we saw that image posts are still the most engaging format for um, top sponsored content as they were in Q1 last year. Um, carousels account for more posts now that they've been more adopted as a format. Um, when we switched to looking at the most commented sponsored posts, we saw that video accounted for a larger slice, probably because you know people are spending more time with video content. They're already pausing in the news feed and looking at it, so they might be more likely to um, comment. And then just some overall Instagram trends for working with influencers. These are the trends we noticed from the top sponsored posts. So there's two tactics we see over and over again. So either the brand naturally fits into the influencer's life or the brand has been transformative in some way to them. As we saw with the Bumble example, there's more creativity depending on the influencer and their audience. So it could be a funny post, it could be teaching them something new, it could be inspiring. Um, these influencers are really promoting an aesthetic that's presented as accessible to their followers, this attainable inspiration. Um, we also saw some gamification. We saw quizzes, giveaways, asking users to tag friends or give an opinion. So there's a lot of strategies you can, you can really use here. And we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Instagram stories and along with that Snap stories. So um, stories are great because rather than you have to go back to the Instagram profile and click the link in the bio, you can directly you know, swipe up to see content. You can um, click to go to a web page or a store page. Um, my favorite example here is obviously the hedgehog <laughs> because it's cute. But yeah, there's there's a lot of new ways to experiment in, uh, with your influencer strategies this year. So it's, it's really good to try everything and see what is a hit for your brand specifically. Um, and then just, you know, to touch base again, I know we talked a little bit about this with um, Pampers a moment ago, but to show the impact that these influencers have with just one post compared to the brand's on average likes and comments per post. So this is for a variety of industries. You know, we have beauty on here, fashion, autos, retail, travel, tech. You can see that just one influencer post can reach a good deal more people and really get your brand out there than um, just your brand account. I'm going to hand it over to Ben now to move on to Facebook. Yeah, I get to I get to talk about Facebook, which is is always fun. Um, Facebook's actually interesting because the trends really are quite different from Instagram on a lot of on a lot of levels. Um, one thing that <laughs> hasn't changed, as you can see on the left there, is the popularity of the Jenners and the Kardashians. Um, but you know, the the ubiquity of of Facebook makes it a very kind of unique animal. Um, daily active users actually grew by 48 million uh, in Q1 of 2018, which brought it up to 1.45 billion, which is just crazy numbers. Um, according to one survey, as you see there, Facebook's the most influential social channel with 19% of consumer purchase decisions coming through the platform. Um, and you know, we regularly see uh, celebrities and thought leaders making our rankings of the top Facebook posts. Um, but it, you know, it's not just uh, the Jenners and the Kardashians. There's also space for other people. You know, we talked a bit about micro influencers earlier. It really does come from a wide variety of industries and interests. 
can be anything, you know, models, journalists, foodies, health growers, everything, everything under the sun, even down to gamers and environmentalists. If you can think of it, someone's an influencer on Facebook in it, I, I would suggest. Um, but a, a thing that we notice generally is that uh, there's more opportunity for dialogue between users than there is on Instagram. And content kind of tends to encourage that. But, you know, you, users can have threaded replies, they can post photos in the replies or, or other links, and there's just a bit more versatility there. A lot of the engagement that we see on Instagram is, is likes. There's a lot of comments on Facebook as well, so the, the content tends to really uh, encourage a discussion. And there is also a bit of a difference in terms of the content that's posted by celebs versus what's posted by non-celebrity influencers. So celebs tend to be more direct, I guess you'd say, and more, more like traditional advertisements. Um, you know, they, they've been told to post something about the brand and they, they post something very simple about the brand and it's a brand that they like and whatever, but there's no like real personalization there a lot of the time. But uh, the non-celebrity influencers that we see driving engagements tended to have a clear mission or, or focus of some form, whether that's parenting or, or food or fitness, as you can see in both the examples there, those are some examples of that. Um, and yeah, as I said, they're, they're often very personal. They, they share their thoughts, they, they share their ideas, opinions, everything more openly. It's a very open start to a conversation. And that's really what it is. It's the start to a conversation with their audience rather than um, just telling them about this product. It's, I like this, what do you think? How can we do this better? All that kind of stuff. So there is that difference between celebrities and non-celebrities there. Um, in terms of branded content opportunities as well, there's there are opportunities out there, and it, it's similar to, to influencer impact, actually, working with a popular page, whether that be a publisher or, or even just another brand. It can really help you reach a customer base or an audience base that you might not otherwise get in front of. So um, the top 100 branded posts in our analysis actually drove an average of about 10,000 of 10,530 shares per post. And I'll be specific. Why not? I have the number there in front of me. Um, and sports and uh, athletes, publishers and celebrities all actually created the most posts in the top 100 branded posts for uh, April and May. And we can even hone in on a uh, specific example here. Um, and that's Clorox, which, you know, the, the cleaning brand. And an influencer post on Facebook drove nearly 70,000 engagements for Clorox. Um, and, you know, we compare that to their average Facebook post uh, on the Clorox Facebook page of 435. And you can really see the value in partnering with, with someone who has maybe a, a wider reach or would reach people that you wouldn't normally uh, get in front of. And yeah, it, we'll, we'll dive further into that here. So the branded post actually came from Attention, which is a, a social publisher. Um, and it was about kids who clean are 64% more likely to exhibit higher empathy as adults, which you know I'm sure is something we all strive for. Uh, high empathy is, is generally considered a good thing. And you can see that that's got uh, 45,000 likes and reactions, 21,000 shares, and 3,000 comments, which is phenomenal. Um, and you compare that with even the very top post from the Clorox Facebook page, uh, which was about cleaning your deck with Clorox, basically. Um, basically a traditional ad. It's nothing more than that versus this story that attention is telling. And the Clorox post got 1,600 likes and reactions, 1,400 shares, and 198 comments, which is it's fine. It's not bad, but but the the reach that attention gets and uh, the amount of attention that attention gets, I guess, and engagement is is astonishing, really, when in comparison um, when you consider that it's for the same brand. Um, so just moving on quickly to the formats of these top branded Facebook posts, uh, it's interesting actually because. Normally what we see is native video doing extremely well, kind of blowing everything else out the water. Um, that's not really what we've seen here when we're looking at all engagements at least. So when we look at all engagements, actually the thing that drives them the most is photo posts, just. There's not much in it between photo and video, but photo does just win the day. Um, when we change that to uh, Shares or comments, it does change, and video does come out on top. This is non-live video, so this is native, native video, um, and you know drives seventy-one percent of all shares and sixty-three percent of all comments. 
the um, most uh, shared post and the most commented post. Uh, okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah, that was I'm my confusing, mislabeling. Confusing myself. That's okay. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so it, it, either way, it's all about the visual content. So links, links have not done so well with this, and whether it be photo or video, it's all about that imagery. I guess is the is the takeaway from this. Um, and just some, some trends of the top Facebook sponsored posts then before, before I let Gabrielle take over again. Um, brands are either incidental in these posts or they're the focus. That might sound a bit confusing, but it basically means that they're either, it, it's all or nothing essentially. They're either the complete center of the post or they're just in the background floating around. Um, there's never any like 50-50 uh, split between, between things. It's, it's all or nothing. Um, they tend to stay in alignment with the page's content. Obviously, if you want to partner with an influencer, you want to do that because you want to reach their audience. And if you're forcing them to be different to what their audience is accustomed to, then they're, that's not going to resonate with their audience. So, so you need to find someone that really um, aligns with your message as a brand. Or, or if not, then you need to align yourself with their message for whatever campaign you're doing. Um, there's a real focus on the content hook or theme, and that, that can be any number of things. It can be a value like adventure or enthusiasm, compassion, a current events issue or charity. Any number of things will work, but you, you just have to pick something to be your hook and, and stick with it. And as we said, the posts encourage discussion or users sharing their opinions and experiences. Um, and yeah, it, it really is a, a big thing for um, discussion to occur. That's that's really what what we want here. What's also interesting is that the brand really you know kicks it off themselves. So in these two examples here, we just showed how they um, link to you know basically learn more about about the campaigns, whether it's you know an actual link to the recipe or you know link to uh, the the Pantene campaign. Yeah. Since you're talking anyway, do you want to talk about YouTube? <laughs> yes, I love talking. So um, let's talk about YouTube. So um, we haven't analyzed YouTube too heavily on the blog before, but given our interesting findings, I think we'll, we'll definitely be exploring it more. So here are our YouTube fast facts. <laughs> um, if you're trying to reach Gen Z or millennials, YouTube is a great place to do that. So. Um, What's really interesting is that more publishers and brands are trying to move away from passive scrolling this year, as are the platforms. And YouTube is, is excellent because people are really going there for intentional viewings. They're not just you know scrolling down the feed, they're stopping, they're engaging, they're taking time to watch a video. Um, several, several studies actually speak to the trustworthiness of YouTube influencers, especially compared with celebrities. Um, so these uh, audiences are really connecting with the influencers and, and seeing them as almost a friend or a personal um, relationship in their lives. Um, so this video example that we put here, which is partnered with Loot Crate, drove um, 156,000 likes and 11,000 comments and 3.5 million views on YouTube. So then we looked at uh, their own YouTube channel for Loot Crate, and we saw that they only drive you know, hundreds of views per video. So really a huge difference here. Then we wanted to compare, it's kind of apples and oranges, but we wanted to look at Facebook, and um, what we saw is Loot Crate's Facebook page drove an average of 902 engagements per post in March, and again, just thousands of engagements per Instagram post. So this one video was way, way more impactful than um, any of their other social channels, which is pretty interesting. Um, again, we're seeing possibilities across many different industries. Brands can really find opportunity with influencers cross-platform. Um, we saw both legacy brands and digital natives. We saw apps um, and more traditional brands alike. Uh, but the most interesting metric to us was when we looked at the duration of these top videos. So when we looked at the top sponsored videos on YouTube and we compared them with non-sponsored videos on YouTube and um, non-sponsored videos on Facebook, we saw that the YouTube sponsored content was on average nearly 14 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And the longest one was more than a half hour long and others were quite consistently more than 15 minutes long. And then on YouTube for non-sponsored videos, it was about eight minutes. On Facebook, it was about three minutes. So there's a huge opportunity here to really catch attention and keep it. 
Um, so what are the top trends to know about the in, uh, influencer videos on YouTube? They're, they're really human. So um, people aren't afraid to really bear it all, show really human emotions on their face, show even embarrassing things. They just kind of lay it all out. Um, they're, again, about inspiration that's really attainable. Uh, as we just saw, there's opportunity for longer engagement with a piece of content. And they can be a really product focus. So um, if any of you have children, you might know this one when they steal your iPad from you. But Ryan uh, Toys Review is a huge YouTube channel, and it's basically just this kid playing with toys. But um, it's massively successful. As we can see here, this one video had nearly 3.1 million views. Um, and they are really heavily product focused, these videos. Um, there are others from beauty and fashion influencers or um, gamers, and it's really just blurring the line between content and an ad almost because it's just so product heavy and users are okay with that. It's, they're really engaging, they're watching in droves, they're liking and commenting and subscribing. It's, it's um, a huge opportunity. So I'm going to hand it over again to Ben. Hooray. Oh, and I get to talk about blogs. Did you ever have a blog, Gabrielle? I had a live journal in middle school. It was, it was pretty embarrassing. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely had a blog that had a lot of very bad poetry on it. So please don't go and look that up after yeah. the... Don't, don't Google our names. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is uh, blogs, and this is... Um, it, it, it's a very successful area, actually, for, for web influence. And... 71% um, of marketers actually say blogs are the most important influencer network, up from 48% last year. Um, and, you know, a big reason why it's so successful is dark social, which is what we see here. Um, and that is basically, if you don't know, a lot of stuff obviously happens on social media. We can see that, um, particularly shares. But dark social is actually responsible for, uh, depending on the study you read, up to up to 70%, here we have it at 65% of shares are, are on dark social. I, I think that's worldwide. Um, I, I think in North America, it's about 60%, the last thing I read. But it, either way, a huge amount of the shares that are happening are happening away from the platform. So whether that's in WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, it, it could be anything. I'm, I'm sure there are other Messenger apps that I am not thinking of off the top of my head. But yeah, and, and that, that means obviously that they're not uh, at the whim of the algorithm, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of conversation, let's say, around the algorithm uh, this year so far. And basically, if you're if you're being shared person to person, like friend to friend or family member to family member, you're not as affected by that um, in dark social as you would be on on a, on a regular social network. So that's why it's a a, a very important. Uh, place to, to influence content is, is, is on there. So um, another place though is Pinterest, which is a big place for bloggers. Um, it, it's often focused on recipes and crafts and it regularly actually outpaces publishers and brands. So uh, we can see there that actually the ones that are in bold are um, bloggers and they're you know doing getting more pins than delish.com, which is a, a huge uh, website uh, that's focused on recipe content, and and these these three blogs have got more pins than them in Q1, which is crazy, it is crazy numbers. Um, and in our holiday analyses, we actually see uh, individual blogs often scoring the most Pinterest pins for celebration ideas. So that might be uh, recipes, crafts, decor, whatever it might be. Um, you know, someone's out there doing it, so you can find these people and and partner with them if you want to. Or, whatever you want to do basically but there's a, there's a lot of um there's kind of a diy element to pinterest but not in the traditional like home decor way it's you know recipes and arts and crafts and all that kind of thing so if you're looking at pinterest that's where you probably want to go having said that there are creative opportunities outside those those verticals um the daily mail actually has seen huge growth on pinterest uh, through covering the british royal family and the upcoming Royal Wedding, which I know we're all very excited about. Um, I'm really excited. <laughs> good to hear. I've, I've brainwashed Gabrielle <laughs> into being very excited about it. Um, but yeah, so beyond um, the Pinterest sphere, we can see more trends. Um, but what is it that makes this content shareable? Um, it's actually 
inspiration that's a big one um it's applicable to anyone i mean anyone anyone can be inspired you see the second one there is the power of a positive attitude um we've highlighted there uh, lots of facebook engagements over a million um so yeah really driving inspiration is, is a big one um there's also the classic uh, that we keep coming back to is confirmation bias um especially with the world currently the way it is there's a lot of political discussions going on all around the world so uh, that people are very entrenched in and the basically to be told you're correct and your point of view is correct whatever that point of view may be people like to hear that because people like being right uh, essentially so yeah having having people's opinions confirmed is also a big driver um and yeah it's it's things that speak to an emotion or tell a story you know it's it's the oldest trick in the book. We almost don't have to say it anymore. You know, emotional storytelling is is basically from the from the Iliad onwards is is, is what it comes down to. But we still like to highlight these things because it's, it still works, and you know, we we, we have to mention if it mention it if it's still working. So, um, just some quick trends to the top blog influencer content of Q1 before I hand back to Gabrielle. Um, they often tell a story or share some information along with anything actionable. Uh, they're personal and they share candid opinions that might be details from their lives, both the highs and lows. And that ties into this next one, which they, they talk to their readers like, like a friend, like they, they share the details of their life. They, they don't cut people out. It's not this uh, manufactured brand that you see maybe elsewhere on the internet. This is, you know, very, clear and straightforward communication with with people that they see as as humans and not just like a homogenous blob of audience it's they'll they'll uh, they'll jump into the comments and they'll build a community and they'll encourage people to talk to each other and they'll talk to their their audience and it's very it, it's a very personal thing um they also use clear focused appealing visuals and um I, Similar to how we saw with uh, YouTube, affiliate links uh, can show that sponsorships aren't always obvious. That's something to be careful with. Um, whether something's an affiliation or a sponsorship, it's not always clear. So uh, it's worth drawing that distinction and just making sure you're clear about what that means. Um, but yeah, I'll hand back to Gabrielle now, who's going to take you through some best practices. Yeah, so we, we ran through most of these already, but just to kind of go over some of the um, changing trends for 2018 and, and what this means in terms of new opportunities, um, you know, there's more opportunities than ever to get involved in influencer campaigns this year. Um, so that's really awesome. And... Uh, so what's the opportunity here in 2018? So I put these two examples here on the left um, just to show that it's now going uh, beyond fashion, beyond fitness, beyond food more than ever this year. So these were two branded content examples on Facebook. And what's interesting about them is the one on the left is a health brand and the one on the right is a B2B brand. And these are brands that you might not have traditionally thought had a fit on um on influencer campaigns, but but clearly they do. So there is some relevancy, and it, a lot of it is about knowing your audience, knowing who you're partnering with, and and what value you're delivering to your audience. Um, so what's interesting about that is that. Um, in a study by the ANA, they found that 46% of brands don't plan to use influencer marketing um, because of issues like uh, FDA restrictions here in the U.S., um, you know, government restrictions, healthcare brands specifically were worried about health insurance portability and accountability act regulations, and other concerns were about risk and brand safety issues. But, you know, as we're seeing, there, there is an opportunity to do this the right way. Um, and 2018 is a great time to get in on this. Uh, we recently had a panel where we spoke to um, the social media director, I believe, of Aetna, Chris Radcliffe. And he said that social media is becoming more of a place for causes and less about vanity. Um, we're seeing a lot more uh, social media movements, a lot of brands being socially conscious mm -hmm. this year, acting like um, corporate citizens. So there is, there is more opportunity mm -hmm. than ever. 
Um, what we're also seeing is a shift away from one-off sponsored posts. So brands are more doing partnerships now. So they're doing longer campaigns with an influencer. So they're really, you know, telling a story with this influencer and, and, and hooking their brand into the story. Um, you know, again, the, the most topical example would be the Kardashians and all their Calvin Klein posts on Instagram. But but again, you, you find that storytelling narrative, you find that hook, whether you're teaching your audience something new, inspiring them, entertaining them, and, and that's what uh, works. Um, and then what we saw from another study is that 52% of marketers are planning programs that leverage multiple types of influencers this year. Um, so now celebrities, top tier influencers, bloggers, micro influencers, they're really building out an integrated influencer strategy this year. Um, so that is all great to see. And uh, especially with the micro influencers, brands are now realizing that engagement matters more, um, like deep engagement rather than just views or, or clicks. And as platforms like Facebook and Instagram are changing their algorithms to benefit quality content, micro influencers posts are, are much more likely to be treated like friend and family content in the algorithms. So 2018 full of opportunity. Um, and again, just to highlight a few more opportunities here. So um, things that were previously untalked about on social media or possibly even, even taboo have new um, potential. So on the left here is the Body Coach, which is a um, fitness uh, influencer in the UK, and he has nearly 3 million followers on, on Facebook. And he's getting into the um, mental health benefits of, of exercise. So, you know, if you're a brand that deals with mental health or you want to talk about mental health, that's okay. It's not as like taboo as it used to be. And, and users really appreciate it when you're getting on their level and you're talking to them about an, an issue or a concern that affects them in the day to day life. Um, again, in the middle here, we have an Instagram example. We have this um, influencer partnering with, with Pampers um, and a midwifery brand, I believe. So talking about birth and, and midwifery things, again, that you possibly didn't share on social media previously because birth is not as pretty as a happy new baby. <laughs> um, and then lastly, on the right here, um, a frugal frugality and personal finance um, Instagram account. So they they have a pretty high engagement rate. And what's what's known about about this is that millennials in particular, you know, we don't we don't trust the the banks or uh, with good reason, so I might argue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if you guys graduated any of you into 2008, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I hope things are better now. Uh, but yeah, so we don't we don't necessarily trust banks or, or finance brands, but we do trust our peers. So you know, for those brands to partner up with an influencer and connect to us about our personal finance or investing or or anything else is probably more impactful than just just going out there cold. Um, so just again, a few a few best practices for influencer campaigns and in, in 2018 and there I promised you pets there's our pet <laughs> post right there um, so influencers can work across multiple verticals you don't need to just be a, a fashion brand or a beauty brand to get out there the example on the right is a, um, a gaming brand and it, it did pretty well by partnering with a, a pet influencer um, but you can also try partnering up with other brands even publishers well rather even other brands um, and micro influencers are, are really the way to go this year. They have, you know, smaller but really engaged audiences who, who really trust them. Um, and you should be mindful of the influencer's existing audience and content. Is it aligned with your brand and what your brand is trying to accomplish? Um, are there any ongoing current topics or events that your audience and the influencer's audience both care about? And you should definitely try experimenting with different campaigns. You should try different platforms, different formats, different influencers, really just to um, you know, get more discoverability and have more of an impact. Speaking of which, <laughs> how do you find these influencers and kickstart your own campaigns? It's all very well talking about uh, how effective influencers are, but we know that it's not always the easiest thing to find these people. So here are just some quick tips for that. Um, You've got to determine your goals first and foremost of using an influencer. You really have to ask yourself, you know, why am I doing this? Um, is it to 
uh, brand awareness or a increase in sales or, or customer advocacy of some form. If you don't know why you're doing it going into it, you won't know if you've been successful. So really the key thing when you're prepping this campaign is, is to understand what the point of this is, if it's the right fit for you, and how you're going to move forward and measure, measure your success. Once you've done that, it's very important that you do your research, you uh, understand the audience of the influencer with whom you're partnering, uh, whatever their mission is, whatever their aesthetic is, and make sure that kind of aligns. Um, you then pitch them, of course, and partner with them. Sometimes these, these people are, um, are massive influencers sometimes, so you might have to convince them why they should work with you rather than, uh, rather than the other way around. Um, and then you've got to find your hook. Gabrielle's written here, be your best brand self. I refuse to say that as a, as a, as a piece of advice, but that's, that's the kind of thing you should be looking at. You, you really have to convince people why uh, your campaign is, is so unique and, and special and, and all that stuff. So um, you then also have to understand that these influencers may want editorial freedom themselves. You know, as I said, some of these people have huge audiences. They won't necessarily want to be told what, what to do. And, you know, at the end of the day, often they'll know best. They, they will know what uh, their audience, what resonates with their audience and what their audience will, will essentially want to see. And possibly they might have ideas that you wouldn't have had. So. Um, I think allowing them to have some of that creative input is often a very positive thing for these kind of campaigns. Um, and, you know, tying into that, take, take risks. You know, they, they talk to their audiences on a peer-to-peer -peer level, these people, in a way that, that brands don't or can't or, or, or whatever the right word is there. But the, they, they know their audience inside out. And if they, if they think a risk is appropriate, often that will be the right thing to do. Um, but obviously, with, with, with all due care, in that sense as well. Um, and then the last thing really to do is, is measure your success against very clear KPIs. Um, hopefully you defined what you were looking to achieve at, at the start of the process as we advise. And if you did that, then you'll have a very uh, obvious set of goals that you try to achieve and, and whether you've measured up to those goals. Um, and yeah, this is just about understanding what works in sponsored content. So we, we see some examples here, which Gabrielle can talk you through. Yeah, so we, um, you know, we have our database of, of the world's most engaging content here. So um, I just pulled this uh, literally right before we started from uh, <laughs> Newslip Spike. This is fresh data. Fresh the freshest data. data. So I was just searching again a few different um, keywords around sponsorship in, in Newswhip Spike, which is our, our real-time platform and has um, the world's web content and social content. And uh, just looking at YouTube specifically for some top sponsored um, videos over the past three days. So, um, you know, it's just really good to get an understanding of what's out there in sponsored content, what's working, why it's driving engagement. So, you know, to take the time to look at it and think, why, why was this successful? Um, so, you know, just here are a couple examples and just, you know, even study the captions, um, how long they were, what the subject matter is, how it was framed, um, and really just drill down and spend time understanding it. It's interesting as well, because I'm actually, as an Englishman, I'm vaguely familiar with Arsenal Fan TV. Um, and they're basically, they're a uh, football, or oh, soccer, sorry, soccer channel that uh, does analysis of Arsenal's performances, basically. And they've actually, they're sponsored by Vanarama, which is a van rental service, I think. So really, like, nothing, nothing to do with each other, you wouldn't think, but... It works, clearly, it's, it's worked, so. Just getting your name out there. Yeah. My favorite is Deadpool this week with yeah, uh, Manchester really cool. United, yeah, so yeah, yeah. guys, watch that. That's, I should get paid for influencing well, yeah, exactly. Deadpool. Look at us being influencers. I know, <laughs> it's great. Um, so yeah, I mean, you want to understand also, oh, uh, even just down to the category, once you understand like what's working uh, broadly for sponsored content, you should you should look at your industry, you should look at your niche. So here, just from News with Analytics, again, we pulled the top uh, parenting influencers, which, which is pretty interesting um, because we're able to look at, okay, so how many sponsored posts are they doing? What's the actual average um, likes and comments that they're getting per per post? Um, and the example here is from the second one, the bucket list family, which actually has the highest average um, on on this list here. Um, 
so yeah, you want you want to find the influencers that are also in your industry, and then see how impactful their sponsored content actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is uh, fashion brands engagements for sponsored Instagram posts in Q1. And you can see that um, you can really look at your competitors here and see see what they're doing. And Nordstrom is the top here. And Gabrielle actually noticed something on this, that there's actually a lot more, they're doing a lot more close-ups um, of the faces and things. So just, yeah, I, I mean, you, you will see these these shifts in trends and it's actually a lot easier to do in, in our platform than, than doing it manually. So we're, we're lucky that we were able to do that. And um, yeah, Nordstrom, Nordstrom is really well ahead of the competition along with Topshop here. Yeah, we were looking at these um, brands and then we were combining them with those sponsored hashtags in our database. So we were finding this wide universe of, of influencers and how they're using um, using their content and partnering with these brands. And, and it's pretty interesting to see the, the change in trends. It used to be a lot more just like uh, a year ago, it was just kind of far out outfit posts for, for Nordstrom. And then this year we saw in some of these top posts, they're really starting to kind of hone in on, on the faces, which mm -hmm. is a, a interesting shift as Ben, as ben said. Um, and then, you know, after looking at your competitors, seeing what your competitors are up to, you might have a certain aesthetic or a feel you're going for with your influencer campaign. So we decided to be be pretty basic um, and look at brunch. I actually started off by looking if there were any posts around bottomless brunch, but I was disappointed. So um, just looking at, you know, a, a common uh hashtag or feel or it could be anything from like avocados or um hashtag woke I, I don't know <laughs> but um just looking at how different users are creating sponsored content around the theme or or a feel or an aesthetic um can also help you frame your strategy if you have some goals that you're trying to make your brand be associated with so um, we just looked at the top sponsored posts with mentions of brunch for Q1. The top one came from Brooklyn uh, Beckham. But uh, you can see how others are, are kind of crafting this um, aesthetic of, you know, very treat yourself, almost hedonistic um, things around brunch because we all deserve a good brunch, right? That's right. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's making a comeback as brunch, apparently. Um, it's, it's come back. It never went away. It never went away. <laughs> we need to get Justin Timberlake to do a new song about it. Bring, bring brunch back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what should we remember about influencer campaigns? And I have the greatest influencer campaign of all time there on the right, mm -hmm. if you've seen Mean Girls. But uh, what to really just remember this year going forward is, you know, influencers aren't limited to A-list celebrities or personalities. Yeah. You don't need to drop several million on Kylie Jenner to um, start an influencer campaign. And micro-influencers might even just have the bigger impact after 2018's early algorithm changes. And um, it's really key to understand the differences platform by platform of what's going to work for influencer campaigns and how that will translate to your business goal, whether that's, you know, brand awareness or actual um, uh, buyer actions. Um, and then, you know, basically just be human with all of your marketing, not just influencer campaigns, but just broadly, um, you know, just put your audience first, consider would you want to see this in your in your social feeds? Would you stop and actually like this content? And really just do your research before starting any influencer campaign. Don't just jump in there. Look at the data um, beforehand, look at the data during your campaign, and look at the data afterwards and really set some metrics, compare against your competitors and, and, and see whether this, this is um, actually working for you. Um, and of course, use use us for your daily needs. Um, but yeah, thanks for um, joining us today. So um, uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, feel free to ask your questions here, tweet at us, um, or get in touch at blog at newswhip.com. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. All right, have a good rest of your day. Bye.